Hello. This video will be a short explanation of views of the three bugs. What they are, what impact they have, and where they come from. So, what is a use of the free? A use of the free bug is a memory error. Succinctly, it is where a region of memory is accessed after it has been freed. That's the name. More on that shortly. This bug is very common in memory unsafe languages, such as C and C. You know, the language that your web browser, operating system, and word processor are all written in. Both Microsoft and Google have independently come to the conclusion that approximately 70% of all security bugs are memory errors. In Google Chrome specifically, about half of that 70% are use after free issues. That is a lot of bugs. Importantly, use after free bugs are almost always a security risk due to the nature of how they work. So how do they work? First, let's define our terms. Free memory is memory that has been deallocated by a program. It is marked as no longer in use. Notably, memory areas marked as free are available to be reused by an application. Now, it's generally not a good idea to free memory that's still in use. And while it's not done on purpose, people aren't perfect. Mistakes happen, especially when dealing with large and convoluted structures. Structures such as those involved in a JavaScript interpreter or an HTML parser. The gestalt of this issue is this. First, obtain a reference to a memory address. Then, free the memory that your reference points to. You now have a reference to an empty memory region. Great. So what? At this point, you can allocate new, different types of data, and if you're lucky, have it allocated in the same region you have a reference to. Then, by forcing the program to act upon your new data as if it were the old data, you can cause the program to misbehave, possibly even execute your own code, or just crash. In real life, there are complex techniques involved to ensure that your new data lands in the right place. However, that's a topic for another video. Maybe. Here, we have a contrived example. In our creatively named function, do function, we store a reference to an area of memory. This reference is mem. At some point, later on in the program flow, this area of memory is freed. This means that it will be deallocated and free for use by other parts of the program. OK. Then, we have the do process call. This function will act on the mem reference passed. The do process function will expect mem to point to a specific type of data. If we are able to alter the data that mem points to, then we might be able to cause the do process function to misbehave. Note that using this mem pointer after it has been freed is not correct behavior. This is what causes the bug. Now, for a slightly more realistic example. In this program, we first allocate an object in memory. We store it with the reference thing. Following this, we perform our processing. We will do this by passing the object to our function, do process. This function will call another function pointer that is contained within the object passed to it. This is quite common behavior. After we have passed the object, we free it. From this point, we should not make any more use of the thing reference. Our function now allocates some more memory. In this example, we will allocate specifically 32 bytes of memory to fit in the same place we just freed. This trick works because of the way memory allocators work. As I mentioned earlier, in a real life situation, you would use heap feng shui or massage the heap in order to ensure this allocation lands correctly. And now, here is the crux of the issue. Our program performs a do process function again using the old memory reference. The problem is the memory pointed to by that reference now points to the user input data, which we just allocated. What does that mean? Well, let's try running it. Now, 
We're going to go through this step by step. First, let's run our program. Source is available on GitHub if you want to play along. Links in the description below. So, the first output we see is the result of the do process call acting on the memory reference. All good. Here, we've come to the part of the program that reads user input. We've input a string of 32 characters, because that's how many the program is expecting. Note that this is not an overflow bug. Now, this is the use after free. Our program calls do process on the old memory reference. However, because of how the memory allocator works, as mentioned, this reference now points to the new data we just supplied to the program. As we can see, the program prints a garbage function name and promptly crashes. But hang on, why does it crash? Let's recap. We have our memory reference, thing. This points to an area of memory the size of our object, which in this case is 32 bytes. That part isn't super important. So, in our little program, we take our memory, do our processing, then we free it. That memory is now free for use by other parts of the program. At this point, the thing reference still points to that freed memory. That spot of freed memory is then used for other purposes. In our example, it's used to hold the user input data. This is where we put in our ABCs. We still have the old reference to thing, which now points at this different type of data. If we can make the program reuse this thing reference pointing to our new data, we might be able to break it. Back to our example. If we look back at our program source, we can see that our doProcess function attempts to call a function pointer within the object passed to it. Seeing as, in this case, our user input data is a bunch of ABCs, this causes the program to try and execute the function at address HHHH. That's not a real function address. It's not even valid memory. So the process dies. But what if we didn't pass ABCs? What if we passed a real function address, say, the address of function exploit? If we specifically craft the input to our program, then we can cause it to call a function at an address of our choosing. Here, the crafted input file contains a string evil bad pointer here, and then the address of the exploit function. As we can see, this causes our program to then call the exploit function and not crash. Note, this example is only possible with the address space layout randomization protection disabled. More on that in another video. To access the code used in this video, check out the links in the description below. For more explanations on vulnerabilities and technical content, check out the Arcturus Labs research site. Also, check out Live Overflow for more in-depth explanations on other interesting topics and exploit techniques. Thank you for watching.